What is good, everybody? This is your boy, Bass. And we're on part number three of this sci-fi pistol. We're going to dig into this normal's bait. I'm going to explain the process, the do's and the don'ts. I did make some errors, and I will correct them in the video. First, you're going to bring in your low poly. Go to element select. Begin to move pieces that are not stitched together away from the model. Um, I went back and stitched a couple of pieces together. It would just work better for the actual normal bait. Once you're done with this, you're going to uncheck the light bulb next to the edit poly modifier. It basically undoes what you did in edit poly. It does not work for edible poly. And what I mean by undo is basically bringing the low poly model back to its original state. Then you're going to bring in the high poly model, go to the auto key, turn it on to zero, make sure your keyframe is at zero, turn it on, go to one, and begin moving like elements into like elements, whether it's a clip, barrel, main body, um, lower body, lower receiver, whatever it is, move the high poly into the low poly. And what this does, it, it allows you to go back and forth between keeping the pieces together for your AO bake at the end and then keeping them apart for the projection modifier that I'm gonna put on in just a second. Now, when you're bringing in your high poly models, make sure that you have on back face cold. For the simple reason is I didn't have it on and then when I tried to bake it down it was a dark area and I couldn't understand why it wasn't coming out then I went back to the high poly model checked everything and I saw that it was a couple of faces that were inside out and I really don't know how they ended up inside out but in Mac anything can happen so I had to go and fix that come back in bring everything start from zero and um, everything was all good from there now right here, I'm making sure that the floating geometry stays with each other, making sure that the iron sight, you know, is in tip top shape. Cause I did not have this in the right place at first. Making sure the body is straight. And from right here, I think I'm ready to start the projection modifier stage. <laughs> Now, what's going on right here is you're going to click the vertices, go to the cage, go to shade it, and you're going to use the push and pull uh, right underneath the cage. And you're going to begin to um, make the cage bigger so it can uh, encase both the high poly and the low poly. And then with your floating geometry, you're going to want to make sure that it's inside of the cage too so that it projects on top of the low poly. Now, when you're doing this, do not let your mind trick you to thinking that it's not going to work because it's something that's like new to a lot of people and you're thinking, you know, how is this going to, you know, bake down and this and this and that and that, but it works. You know, I was telling myself this while I was doing it. I was like, man, this is not going to work. You know, uh, I don't have enough pieces. Um, there's too many 90 degree angles. It's not going to work. And don't think that. Just focus on bringing in the cage making sure that it encases all elements and then once you get through this part then I'll explain the next part so right here I'm making sure that I grabbed every high poly model piece and I did not I forgot the trigger so I had to go back bring the trigger in what's good about this is I can isolate one object in the high poly model, bring it over, go back to low poly model, and I don't have to put the projection modifier back on. Now what you really need to be paying attention to is being able to make sure that you're not grabbing vertices from other elements and um, the cage is particularly tight enough to where it can encase the floating geometry. Um, it's not really losing the shape. You just want to make sure that you know everything is pretty even and pretty clean. Now, in my past videos, I talked about how I became um, involved in the game design process. I'm really not going to go too deep into the story because I don't have enough time on this video. But all I can say is that when I first came to George Mason, I was introduced to it by a guy named Matt Nolan. Um, he's a really cool professor. Uh, he's probably one of my favorite professors because he's down to earth. You can talk to him about anything. 
Um, he actually let me use his bass. He has a five string bass that he let me use and I was going to buy it from him, but then I decided not to, but he still let me keep the bass uh, when I wanted to use it to play. Now right here, I forgot another high poly model, so I had to go back to the high poly selection, bring it over, and the projection modifier is automatically put on it. And right here, I'm just um, using the push modifier on the Piccanini rails, making sure that the cage isn't clipping anywhere. But back to how I came into game design. Wait, before I get into that, when you're ready, you're gonna wanna go to pick list. And once you go to pick list, pick everything that's in the high poly model, and then go to your render to texture, turn your pattern up to three, make sure you have on the projection modifier. Um, if you wanna name your normal bake, you can name it. I named mine just to you know keep it um, organized. You're gonna wanna turn up the resolution to the highest one just so you can see errors. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to um, your options, turn on ray mist check, and take off global super sampler. Now, if you want a deeper tutorial in baking the low poly, then uh, I'll link, I guess, a video in the description of where I got it from or the website or wherever. It's a pretty um, intensive process. You know, it takes a long time. Um, really putting this video down to seven minutes it probably took me at least two and a half hours to get this done right here i'm turning back on global super sampler um just to see if the resolution changes and it really didn't but i have on raymond's check just to make sure that the cage isn't clipping it was clipping as you can see uh next to the um iron sight and then i go back just to make sure it's straight I probably will to do this a couple more times just to make sure that I don't have any errors. Now there's nothing wrong with that. It's just to make sure that your it's just to make sure that your normal bake is as clean as possible, basically. I'm gonna do this a couple of more times. And then I'm gonna bring the video to the close. I'm gonna make sure I try to get the textured version of this video in before the day is over. Um, it'll be slowing down a bit, not as fast as this one. I'll be talking of what I'm thinking about and what I'm doing. But if this video has helped you out in any type of way, definitely hit that like button. If you want to see part four of this series, subscribe for more of my videos. This is your boy Bass, graduating May 16th, class of 2014. Yeah, yeah.